everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about Roots of Pasha and I've got a few early hints and tips for you. I've played the game for about 50 days and I've made some huge mistakes along the way. Like who doesn't water their plants in a farming sim? I do not know. Anyways, here are some things that I've learned to help you out in your Stone Age journey. I hope you find them helpful. So the first thing I wanted to talk about real quick is friendships. There is a lot of NPCs to get to know in this game, which may seem daunting, but the mechanics are pretty similar to past games. You can talk to villagers, gift them items, and eventually dance with them. All villagers will have items that they prefer more than others, some are neutral, some they dislike. You can gift one item per day, but two items per week. Friendships are measured by flowers. Undateable characters have a yellow flower gauge and dateable characters have a pinky purple color. You can keep track of your friendships in your journal by clicking on the people section. Here records your interactions, but also tells you how they feel about the gifts that you have given them, which is quite nice to see. It also tells you when their birthday is, which is highlighted by the red flower. Friendships can decay, but reportedly will not go below two flowers simply due to lack of interaction. By having friendships with certain characters, you will also trigger cutscenes, which may affect your game. So it's definitely worthwhile making those interactions and giving those gifts. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is your day. So the day obviously starts at 6 a.m. in the morning, but it finishes at 2 a.m. So you get a warning at midnight, which will tell you that it is starting to get late, that is probably your sign to start making your way home, especially if you're in the savannah or way out in the mines, that's a good time to start making your way back. If the clock strikes 2 a.m. and you are not in bed, you will awake the next morning with reduced stamina. You don't lose any items and you don't appear to lose any contributions. So that's a good thing, but it is a pain when you're trying to work your farm to having that lesser stamina. So head to bed, folks. For well, number three, I'm going to talk about your map. Unfortunately, there is no mini map, which may be annoying for some, but I did find myself navigating pretty easily after a few days, so I don't think it's crucial. Also, the main map itself is great and it gives you so much information and it is really useful if you are trying to find things and people. The main map does work by endless scrolling, so if you're using mouse and keyboard, bear that in mind. It took me a little while to figure it out. I was like, why is this all over the place? Anyway, the map will show you where your clan members are, where your seed spawns are, and where your animal spawns are. It is particularly useful if you're trying to quickly remember something about a particular person, as you can just click on their name and it will tell you their role, and if they have an idea. Their location will also be marked in pink, so you can easily spot them out. If you're looking to locate a person from another clan, it will also tell you if they are visiting that particular day. Really recommend using this and getting used to knowing what's what on your map. It is so helpful. Next up, I want to talk about contributions and prosperity. At first glance, making contributions in the contribution box may seem like you're just selling your produce. However, there is something much more to this as your contributions actually affect the overall clan. Yes, your contributions can be used to exchange with your clan to buy other things or exchange for other things, and it does kind of work as a currency in that sense. However, essentially you're all working together to improve the clan. The overall prosperity of your clan can only go up but not down, and as your prosperity increases, new events will happen and new ideas will unlock. For example, a laundry area, new buildings and things is very kind of intriguing. You may also notice that certain ideas can only begin when you have a certain level of prosperity. So in, in a sense, they are locked behind a prosperity level. If you want to know how much an item will contribute, you are able to hover over it when it is in your inventory and that will tell you. The next thing I want to talk about, because this confused me for the longest of time, so when I had a quest and the quest said that I needed a root. Now I had no idea what a root was, I tried looking for a root, a single root, thinking that that is what it was, but in fact it doesn't refer to one item, it refers to a group of items that come under this tag, under this section. So I eventually figured out that a carrot and a potato fell under this and then I could complete the quest. What you want to do, and I didn't know this at the time, is you can actually hover over that box 
and it will give you a hint as to what constitutes that particular section or that particular item. These will only unlock once you've gathered these items so that's why at the time when I had this quest I didn't know that a carrot or a potato quite fitted within the requirement. So it's definitely worthwhile looking and don't always think so literally about this. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things which you have to learn from playing the game. There are so many items to gather in this game. And one of the things that it took me a little while to figure out is that you can actually shake trees. Obviously, these things on the trees will take some time to grow. So you have to wait until they're in their full grown state. For example, the pine cones go a little bit darker and that's when you know that you can shake them and they will drop from the trees. There are different items that you'll find in different biomes on the trees. For example, the beach. It took me a while to realize, but you can actually get coconuts and you can actually find dates there as well, which I was like, oh, I didn't know this. So keep going back to these areas. Even if you don't go there every day, just go once in a while and who knows what you might find. The next tip is for a little bit later gameplay. So obviously you undergo your rite of passage and you select what kind of buff that you want. I chose a stamina one purely because I can't deal with having a lack of stamina but as you progress as you unlock prophecies and things you receive items and for quite a while I wasn't sure what happened with these items and I did notice that my actual stamina item disappeared but it turns out that if you go into the U page and you'll find that there is some like amulets and things or necklaces and these are where you assign them and that is when those buffs then apply. So if you go in and you do this, then you will receive those buffs for those things. You can only change them once per day. I learned that the hard way. So think about wisely what you're gonna do for that particular day. It does look like over time, you are able to unlock a third section, which will obviously correspond with the more things that we unlock as we progress. Another thing that is worth explaining and that is the knowledge system. This appears to apply to fish and your crops. So the more that you either fish or the more that you either grow a crop, you will learn more about that particular item. For example, with the crops, you will learn how long it takes for that particular item to grow and what kind of seasons it grows in. Things like this will come in handy for when you're kind of learning about um, planting at a certain time. With the fish, it doesn't really appear to tell you. I haven't got to the stage where I have learnt where um, or when the item will spawn, but hopefully over time, maybe it will give you the time frame as well because some fish definitely appear to spawn only at night. For example, the stargazer, that seems to be a nighttime fish. Another big part of the game is animals. There is two forms of animals, pets and farm animals. Both you tame in the same way, however, pets can only live in your home, so you'll need to have built one before they become invitable. The farm animals need to be housed in a shed. Depending on the animal, you'll be able to collect different harvestables from them. Some of them will require different tools. For example, to obtain fur, you need shears, and to obtain milk, you need the milker pot. The items that they drop may also be affected by the gender. For example, male ostriches will drop feathers, whereas females drop eggs. I would definitely recommend trying to tame one of each gender and do not forget to take care of them as your animals by petting and feeding them. Gaining their trust will have positive impacts such as making them a rideable mount. The next tip is a thank you from a subscriber. They left a comment and told me that actually when you hold your mouse down while using the bucket, you can water three plants at once. I don't know how I missed this, but this was a huge game changer for me. So thank you so much, Brownie905. And finally, another thing that I just wanted to say is when you place your buildings, sometimes I know I panic about getting them in the right place. You can actually move your farm buildings to your sheds and things free of charge from Kroll and they are instant as well. So it's a great tool to be able to do that and it not cost a penny. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. If you have any tips and tricks, please share them in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them where I can. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.